Hey guys, so in this video what we're going to do is we're going to actually take a look at getting GNS3 running in ESXi. You know, again, going back to this question, a lot of people ask me, you know, what do I use when I'm teaching a class or, or what kind of simulator do I use? The answer, of course, is GNS3. And what I use is I actually use ESXi sitting in the background. I have an HP server and I'll bring up VMware and show you in just, uh, just one second. But I have an HP server. I want to say it's a GL uh, or an HP 360, GL 360, I think, something like that, or maybe it might, may even be a, a 380. We'll take a look in just one second. Um, but the idea is that this guy actually sits in the background running ESXi, and then what happens is I have my desktop. These guys go into a into a, you know my LAN switch here. It's actually a 3750, not that you care, but just to give you an idea. And then I have my, my desktop sitting off here in the, in the corner, and I ha this is where I actually have the GNS3 client actually running. So the client actually running on my PC makes a, makes a, uh, a call to this, uh, this VMware image that's sitting back here on my server. And so all of the resources that I need are on the server. So, you know, when you normally run GNS3, if you're running everything local, this is essentially where you need your CPU and your, your RAM. That's where you need your resources. But in my case, this is where essentially the magic happens. So just like uh, just like installing the the client version of GNS3, you're going to need a login. You can see that I'm logged in over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead. We're going to click on download, and it's going to bring us to this page. We'll we'll select download here underneath the version, and. If we were just downloading the regular client, like we showed in the other video, this is essentially where you would, uh, you know, what you would select. However, in this case, we're actually going to select to download the VM. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll click on the VM. It's going to bring us to another page, downloading the GNS3 VM. It's going to give us this little GitHub link here. So let's go ahead and click on that. And you can see that what happens here is it actually brings us to the latest version. Now, the latest version that's actually been... Um, been compiled for GNS3 is actually 2.0, but it's still, you can see here, Alpha 1. So essentially, this guy is still in um, in beta. It, it's not full production. But if we scroll down here, we should see, let me actually go back. I think I clicked on that link by, uh, by accident. There we go. So if we scroll down here, we can see that the current latest version is 1.5.2. So let's go ahead here. And if we were if we were installing the client, you could download it again here. And here's where you're going to have your VMware options right here. So if you can you can run this guy in VirtualBox. I mean, you can see here you can run it in VirtualBox. You can run it in VMware Workstation. This is generally the one that I run right here. Now on my laptop, uh, usually I'll run VirtualBox because it's free. But I have been known to run on other machines that I have VMware Workstation. The principle is exactly the same. Uh, the idea is exactly the same where the VM would just simply live on your laptop inside of a VM or on your desktop inside of a VM. Here in my case, it's going to live on an external server, but again, the same exact principle applies. So you'd want to download this and then you'd want to extract it. Now, I already have mine extracted, so what we're going to do is I'm going to bring over um, my ESXi client here, and I'm going to show you how to actually get this thing going, how to actually get it um, imported, get it running for you so that you can... Uh, you can run GNS3 on a remote server. You can see here that I actually do have my production version. We'll go ahead and we'll import a brand new one and we'll name it something different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to file. Let me actually cancel this and show you that one more time. So I'm going to go to file and then deploy OVF template. All right. Now what it's going to do is it's going to ask me where is this file that essentially you have uh, you've downloaded. And you can see here this is the OVA, so I've extracted it already. If I go to my downloads folder, you can see that I've extracted the, uh, the ESXi image that they've given me. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and select that OVA file. I'll say open. We'll go ahead and click next. Can't change anything here. No options. We'll say next. Here's where I would want to essentially name it. So what we'll do is we'll say GNS3 uh, test. I'll go ahead and say next. Here's where I would select what uh, what storage I wanted on. Now, in my case, the the boot rate here. This is my production storage. So, being that we're testing, we'll use some extra drives that I have. We'll say next. Uh, you could change the the um, the data store options here if you wanted to. You could use thick provision. Uh, you could use thin provisioning if you wanted to. Uh, I generally just leave it as the default thick provision. So, essentially, the hard drive space that it believes it requires is exactly what it's going to grab. So, we'll say next. Here's my confirmation, and I'll say finish. Now, you guys can see down here at the very bottom of your screen that it says in progress. So currently, let me actually drag this onto the screen here. Uh, you can see that it's currently importing this appliance. So it's creating my GNS test. You can see that it's over here. 
uh, in the in the uh, the bar here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to wait for this to happen because it does take about 10 minutes. I don't want you guys just listening to me sing the Jeopardy theme song. So I'm going to pause the video for about 10 minutes and I'll come back when essentially this is finished and we'll just pick up right where we left off. See you guys in a couple minutes. Okay, guys, we are back and you can see that. Um, that my VM is finished, so it says finish deploying right here. I can go ahead and click close. It also gives me down here, you can see at the bottom of your screen uh, right here, uh, lets me know that this is actually completed. So let's go ahead and let's click close here, and uh, and we'll go ahead and, and tweak this. So what I like to do in, in, um, in, in my environment before I actually get this running is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right-click on this guy. We'll go to edit settings. And uh, you're going to want to tweak the memory and the CPU usage that you're going to that you're actually going to use. By default, it's going to come with two gigs of RAM and a single CPU. So you know you're going to want to um, you're going to want to maximize that you know to whatever you want. So I generally just max out one of the one of the processors. And then in ESXi, if you go ahead and click this blue arrow here, it's going to go ahead and max it out to the maximum recommended memory uh, that you should be able to use. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And we'll say OK. And I did promise you, yeah, so this is a DL380G6. Um, I do have uh, 16 logical processors and 60 gigs of RAM. You can see the, compa the capacity here. So it is a pretty beefy box. I was lucky enough to acquire it. So... Um, so you know it worked out. I am running ESXi version uh, version 6, 6.0. I'm going to right click on this guy and I'm also going to say up upgrade the virtual hardware. Now, if you're not running um, Virtual Center and you're running a version below 6, I don't recommend that you do this. I am running version 6, so I'm not going to have any issues. Um, again, if you're running before version 6, like 5. Dot, you know, whatever, um, and you upgrade the virtual hardware, you won't be able to come back in here and say edit settings and actually manage the VM. Uh, your vSphere client will tell you that you're going to need to use the web client in order to do that, and you may have some issues if you have uh, a standalone ESXi server. But anyway, um, before I go ahead and turn this guy on, let me actually give you some configurations uh, of my my server. Mainly, how I have the networks, uh, the network cards set up. So. I have a, a V switch here, and I'm using my, my virtual machine network. You can see I have VLAN 100 set up. I am running these four network cards here in an Ether channel, um, just a, a static Ether channel, a port group that's turned on for these guys, um, and I am using them in a in a load balanced fashion. Uh, if you're going to do that, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set the NIC teaming to route based on IP hash. I have found that that's the easiest, uh, that generally works the easiest, so you don't have to do a lot of other tweaking and um, and configurations. And then, of course, when I load my, my uh, GNS3 template, I go ahead and I put it in that VM network. You can call it whenever you want, Joe's network. Nobody cares. Um, and uh, and in this way, I tag it with VLAN 100, which is going to be the VLAN that this guy's going to live on. And this way, I can actually uh, have connectivity. So let's go ahead and power this guy on. So we'll say power on. We'll go over to the console here, and we'll just wait for it to finish. You can see down in the status bar, we're at 14% down here. Uh, so now 59%, etc. Sometimes when you first start it up, it may hang at like 12 or 14 percent. It's not really the end of the world, not a big deal. Uh, sometimes when you first boot it up, it, it it'll do that. So let's wait here. We should get uh, we should get some some screen output relatively shortly here. Do 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 do. There we go. Uh, so we're starting up. Um, sometimes every now and then I may not get a DHCP address. Not again, not a big deal. I generally set mine to static anyway. But if you do have a DHCP server, uh, there you go. My core switch, my 3750, went and gave this guy a DHCP address. We might as well just leave it. Uh, it's a good way to test connectivity. The first thing I want to draw your attention to, though, is I wouldn't say necessarily a problem, but depending on what you're going to do with the, the the VM and GNS3, this right here is going to be an issue. We're going to want that to say true, depending on what. Kind Kind of images that we run. It's also going to give you better performance. Okay. Now the reason why this actually isn't working is a problem with the way the VM template is actually deployed. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and fix this for you and I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to power this guy off. So I'm just going to right click on it and say power off. We'll hard power it down. Once it turns off, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to right click on it and I'm going to say remove from inventory. Do not say delete from disk because if you do that, you're going to have to redeploy. Just say remove from inventory. Go ahead and say yes. And what that's going to do is it's going to take it out of your list of VMs. All right. Now, with my VMware server highlighted, I'm going to go and click summary 
and I'm going to go over here to where I have my storage. I'm going to right click on where I have that GNS3 VM stored. I'm going to say browse data store. And here we have here our GNS test. I need to download this VMX file. So I'm going to right click on it and I can say download. You can also select the download or upload button here as well. I'm just lazy. So I'm going to click download and I'll go ahead and drop it to my desktop. Now you guys aren't going to see it on my desktop and that's okay because I'm going to open it in, in uh, Notepad++. I like Notepad++ because it gives me, um, or Notepad++, uh, but, uh, because it gives me all of these, all of the settings in a, in a readable format. If you don't use something like this and you just open it up with Notepad, what's going to happen is it, it'll actually just give it to you in, in one long word wrap line. It's going to look like three paragraphs basically. Now. Again, there is a problem when this VMware get, when this VM template gets deployed, and I need to add something down here all the way at the bottom. I'm going to say VHV dot enable, uh, followed by a space and an equal sign, and with quotes, I'm going to just simply say true. All right, so you'll see that Notepad plus plus also kind of uh, pre fills this for me as I hit T. It it you know it kind of auto completes. So this is the command that I'm going to need to uh, that I'm going to need to enter here in order to get this working properly. By default, the VM does not always um, it does not always have KVM true, and, and it's because when the, when the template's deployed, for some reason, this particular command is missing. So we'll go ahead and save it. We'll close down Notepad. Uh, we'll click our folder here again, and I'm going to go ahead and upload that same file. So we'll say upload, upload file, go to my desktop, and I'm going to click uh, that VMX file that we downloaded. We'll say open, uh, and it should download right away. So once it's refreshed, all I need to do is right click on that VMX file again and say add to inventory. Uh, it'll give me an opportunity to rename this if I want to. Uh, I wouldn't do that, but you know, you can if you really want to. All right, so once it's uploaded, we'll close down our data store. We'll go ahead and restart this guy. We'll power it back on. Highlight it, go over to console, and we'll uh, we'll just wait. Sometimes doing this stuff takes patience. Here's why I implement the uh, Jeopardy theme song again. Every now and then, for some reason, this box, maybe one day I'll rebuild it. Every now and then, the console doesn't. Uh, there we go. Uh, so every now and then, for, for whatever reason, I don't get the startup splash screen, and it just goes right to here. But that's all right. Again, not the end of the world. So now you can see here it says KVM true. Uh, let's go ahead and let's bring a command prompt in here. Let's actually make sure that we have uh, we can ping this guy. So we'll just say ping 172.16.100.132. Uh, we should have connectivity to it. No big deal. So we'll close this. And we're going to go over to our GNS3 client. So as far as VMware goes, if you're going to run regular iOS templates like our 7200 router inside of, of a VM, and, and again, the reason why you're doing this is so that the horsepower uh, to run those devices is all here on this VM. It's not inside of your laptop. And the cool thing about this is that let's say uh, you're going to run this on VirtualBox or VMware Workstation. Uh, basically, the way that this would work is you would have your desktop. Let me grab my pen here you know, you would have your desktop or your laptop, and in here, you would have your, let's say, virtual box or your VMware Workstation VM, right? You'd have the actual application, and in here, one of your guest operating systems would be GNS3, okay? And this guy would actually get an IP address from your virtual box client that's living on your desktop, but what you can do is you can limit the resources here, right? So you can say, okay, look, I want to limit this VM. You know, maybe you only have four gigs of RAM. Maybe you say, hey, look, I want to limit this guy to two and a half gigs of RAM and only one CPU, right? Out of out of the out of the resources that you have available on your desktop or your laptop, and then this guy can max out all at once on here. You don't really care. And so down over here, you would have the GNS3 client. Uh, GNS3 client, and basically this guy would just call, you know, through this, through your VMware uh, or your VirtualBox client to that that VM that you have running, right? So you can do the same thing with VirtualBox or VMware Workstation. Okay, I just prefer ESXi. That's how I'm. Uh, that's how I'm set up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Edit and then Preferences, and you can see here that I have a Server tab. So I'm going to click on the Server tab, and then you'll see I have two options. I have a G uh, GNS VM server, or I have a remote server. Now, if you're going to use um, VMware Workstation locally on your laptop, 
or your desktop, you would select VMware. If you're going to use VirtualBox, you would go ahead and select VirtualBox. You can see that it, it barks at me because I don't have it installed. Okay, And if you have either one installed, it's going to it should, in theory, um, if you have everything installed properly, should pre-populate the VM name with your particular uh, server or your, your, your VM that, you, that we're installing, that template. I'm going to use a remote server, though. That's what we need to do because, for me, this server is completely remote. So I'm going to go ahead and say add, and now what it's going to want is it's going to want the IP address of, uh, of our VM, which I think it was 132. Let me just validate it. Yep, 132. So let's go back over here. 172.16.100.132. Leave the port as is. We'll say OK. Hit apply. Now the only thing I'm going to do is over here for the GNS3 VM server, I am going to click remote. So I'm going to say, look, you know, I want you to use a remote server. You don't have to enable it. I just like to, to, to click remote. You can see that it goes back anyway. It's just an old habit. You can leave the local server alone. There's nothing that you need to do there. Once I say OK, I should be pretty much ready to go. You can see that over here, it's now given me under the servers, it's now given me 172.16.100.132.3080, which is the remote server that I'm running uh, for my VMware uh, template, right? So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and say edit preferences, and if you remember the last video, if you guys went ahead and watched that, we added a 7200 series router, and we used it locally. So every time I add these routers into my GNS3 topology, it's going to run locally on my laptop, but we don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete it. And I'm going to say new. And now you can see that I have two options here. So when I go and say new, now instead of just adding it on my local machine, I can add that, um, that 7200 router on a remote computer. So now I'm going to go ahead and say next. Uh, and now it's going to ask me for the image file. Now, you guys remember that I had already pre-downloaded my 7200 uh, iOS, the bin file. I had, I had already uncompressed it. GNS3 did all of that for me. It's not very hard. You would go through the same exact process I'm going now. So... Uh, here where it says iOS image, you would hit browse, and you would point it to the uh, the 7200 bin file that you downloaded. Once you say open here, it may ask you, hey, do you, do you want to uncompress that for me? You can see here that I get an upload message. It was pretty quick. What it's doing is it's uploading this image file to the remote computer for me, so I don't have to upload the images. I'll say next. Again, it asked me the name. We'll say next. It asked me the RAM I want to give it. It'll say next. And then it asked me what kind of interfaces do I want to give it. So again, uh, we'll give it some Ethernet interfaces. We'll give it some serial interfaces. Pack it over. Um, we'll give it some some Sonnet interfaces. And so uh, so we have Ethernet. We have serial. We have Sonnet. We have gigabit interfaces. We'll say next. The idle PC. What's cool now is that depending on how I'm set up, in in my case, I no longer really have to do this because nothing is going to be running locally on my machine anymore. So I don't really care about the idle PC. So I'm going to say finish. We'll say apply and then OK. Now when I come over here, I can do the same thing I did before. I can, I can hold on the shift key, click and drag a set of routers, and let's just say five. So we'll drag, uh, we'll drag five 7200s in here, and you can click on the link button. We'll just daisy chain these guys together. Not, uh, nothing catastrophic. We're just doing this to just have them linked together. All right, so now they're all set up together in a line. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and hit start. And you can see that they all power on. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring Task Manager in here. Just give me a minute. Let me get it. Uh, let me get it in here. And let's see more options. Got to love Windows 10. So you can see here that I have these five 7200 series routers running, and my processor is not doing anything. Uh, my RAM is is still down around three and a half because I have some other things running. So my my machine here is not really doing that much. But if I if I expand this out. Take a look at what my remote ESXi server is doing. My CPU is now at 31%. My RAM is at 1.2%. Uh, if I go over here to ESXi and I click my actual server, you can see that right now my processor is actually starting to peak because now I'm running these, um, these routers, these devices, inside of my ESXi server. Okay, So I can go ahead and I can click on these guys. Let me bring Putty in here. You can see that it's actually starting up. Show IP interface brief. Whoop, I have uh, my caps lock key on. 
and there we have it. So now I'm actually able to get these devices running on it, uh, you know, offloaded on my laptop and onto another server. Okay. Now there's multiple different ways that you can do this. I'm not going to record videos on all the different ways. You know, you guys take what I'm showing you here and play around. Uh, in the next video, what I hope to get to is actually showing you how to get some viral images up and running in your GNS3. So uh, let's say, for example, you wanted layer two. I'm going to show you how to do that next. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay tuned.